It's been a long winter in Europe, with snow and ice blanketing the continent. The weather's made the roads hazardous and the cars dirty, although this has allowed me to get a little creative on the back window. I didn't stop there either. I decided to create a new sticker for the back window, boasting one massive advantage that electric cars have, their lack of noise. My stickers have arrived. So, let's put them on and see how they look. Getting the sticker level and centered wasn't as easy as it sounds, but after a few minutes I had it stuck to the glass and started peeling away the backing. That looks pretty damn awesome to be honest, I am very impressed. Yep, even though it's around five and a half years old, my electric car still shines like new. And this got me wondering, how's the battery holding up after all these years? Now you probably already know about this application. It's called Can Ion, and it tells you everything you need to know about a particular journey, altitude, power consumption, accelerator history. Very, very useful. But there's another application that's more geared towards your battery health, and it is called EV Bat Mon. Now this application is quite good, it shows you a lot of useful information, but what's most important is here on the top left, battery capacity and amp hours. And as you can see, 34.4 amp hours is what the battery capacity is in each cell. Each cell, when new, five and a half years ago, said 50. So yeah, there is some degradation that the cars had, but in five and a half years, that's not too bad. And this got me wondering, how much would it actually cost if I did want to replace this battery one day in the future? So I emailed my local Peugeot dealer to ask for a price for a brand new battery in my terrible Slovak. Well, I've got the price back for a brand new battery pack for my electric car, and it's, uh, well, you better sit down for this. The price for a new battery pack for my car is 18,510 euro. Oh, wait, wait. There is a better solution. In fact, there are three better solutions. First, find a better price, as other owners in Europe have been quoted half this figure for a new battery. Second, buy a used electric car for even less and harvest its battery pack. Or third, and most popular, buy a wrecked car and remove the best battery cells and put them in your own car. Fortunately, my car's battery is still pretty healthy for its age, regularly getting 130 kilometers out of a charge in summer but in winter it's a different story. In fact, we found this out when we decided to embark on a winter road trip. Yep, we'll be taking our little city electric car to the mountains for a day skiing. Our destination was a ski field in northern Slovakia, here, 260 kilometers away, with here being our starting point. We'd be stopping to recharge here in Trnava, then here in Piesceni, then here in Velkia Bierovce, then here in Nova Dubnica, then here in Gilina, before reaching the ski field here in Vratna. Now in summer such a journey wouldn't be a big deal, but winter is a different story. So with the route planned, and the skis jammed into the back of the car, well just, I topped up the windshield washer reservoir, and then I solved the heating problem. The thing is, we'll need to stay warm throughout the journey without wasting precious electricity on heating. So I made sure my diesel heater tank was filled up with liquid cancer, putting a little extra in a spare bottle for emergencies. And with the car loaded up, early on a Saturday morning, we began our ultimate winter road trip. Okay, it is 5.30 in the morning. We are on our way to the mountains to go skiing. We left Bratislava in freezing temperatures and hit the highway. Charging stop number one was at the city of Trnava, 69 kilometers away. Now this stretch of highway in summer normally leaves me with about three or four bars of battery remaining. It says we've got five k's of estimated range to go and we're one bar of battery left, which is very unusual. I'm guessing the weather and the cold is playing a part. Because normally we have a lot more power by this stage. That's a worrying sign for the rest of this trip. All right, there's our charger. It's charging. Time for coffee. With the car quick charging, we then grabbed a quick coffee, and then we truck surfed our way to charging point number two in the town of Piesciani. Now this is called truck surfing. Truck surfing is when you pick a truck and you stick behind it. That way you can stay at a comfortable pace without holding people up. We truck surfed our little city EV to charging stop number three, a trucking yard in Velkia Bierovce, which I'd never seen before. And we're off. 
and after 20 minutes of charging, we flew down the highway to the next stop, although an accident on the motorway forced us onto the side roads. The next problems were finding the charger and the fact that the charger wasn't part of the network that I use. With the Greenway chargers, I have nothing to worry about. I know the chargers are always working and they're always easy to find. Uh, but this is not a Greenway charger. This is a different network, which apparently it's open for everyone at the moment. But this information's old, so I'm going to need some luck. Oh, there's a vault. There's a Chevy vault plugged in. Wow. Let's give it a go. So we crossed our fingers and tried the unknown charger. It's charging. That was easy. For this leg, I charged up to 95%, worried about the longer distance and the snow and rain. All right, we've started the next leg of the journey. 66 kilometers to go until Jelina, then we'll grab one more charge and then head to the ski field. Well, we are truck surfing right now on the way to Jelina. As you can see, it's snowing, which is not good news for my battery temperature, but good news for the ski field. So we're hoping that we may be there within the hour. We're in Jelina now. It says we've, we've got one bar of battery left and we're now hunting for the charger. We left this one a bit close, eh? A little bit too close for comfort. We had left it close to comfort, but we soon found the charger and topped up to 91%, enough for it to climb the mountains to the ski field. But then things started to fall apart, and 20 kilometers outside of town, we realized we were going the wrong way thanks to my GPS. We've just spent ages charging up, and the GPS has, has uh, sent us back in the direction of Bratislava for 20 kilometers. So now we've used very precious, very precious kilometers going the wrong way now. We're getting off the motorway just now, trying to now go back to the ski field, but this is costing us, it's not the time I'm worried about. We, we don't, we probably have enough electricity to get to the ski field okay, but how we're going to get back to Jelina to the car park to recharge, I have no idea. Diesel heaters run out of fuel as well, and I can't. Got all too much going on right now. This is not good. We chose to waste more time charging at the mall once again, rather than risk going to the ski field on half a charge and not getting back. Well, what a disaster! Still, we're charging now. We should be on the ski field within the hour, but that doesn't leave us much time for skiing. And with the car charging once again, I topped up the diesel heater tank with the extra fuel I brought and planned for the last leg, though now it was past midday and we were running out of time before the ski field closed. Well, we're halfway to the ski field. Uh, I think we'll be able to make it there okay. Getting back to another story, as you can see, we're in traffic and it's been yet another accident. Unfortunately, Slavics are pretty enthusiastic drivers and not always suited to the conditions. But here's hoping that we'll still be able to squeeze in a couple of hours, at least an hour and a half of skiing, thanks to all the drama we've had today caused by cold weather, lots of stopping for charging, and ultimately uh, GPS directions that have taken us miles away. Watch this space. This little city EV is well out of its comfort zone up here in the snowy mountains. We managed a couple of hours skiing before making the long journey back home. We spun the roulette wheel of highways, coffee and charging for a few more hours, actually skipping one of the charging points on my overly conservative charging plan. And with the fun long since having drained from the day, we pulled into our street. We're cold because the diesel heater ran out a few hours ago. We're tired because it's been a 17 hour day, but we are successful. We drove this little city car all the way to the mountains and went skiing in one day. We've covered 564 kilometers in a car that wasn't designed to leave the city. So I think we've earned ourselves a cup of tea. So what did I learn from this experiment? Well, that winter road trips to the mountains are hard in a city electric car for obvious reasons. But I'm immensely proud of both the car for managing the journey and the country's fast charging network for being so spread out and reliable. And hey, it's always more satisfying to drive a short range EV a long way than it is for a long range EV. Though I am looking forward to that increased summer range soon.